Hello, hello, and welcome to the Moana Adams podcast, where we talk all things travel, wellness, and teenage girl. I'm your host, Moana, a full-time travel teen. I have a great episode for you this week, so let's get into it. Hello, hello. Today we are, or I am, recording this much earlier than you're going to hear it because we are in our last state. South Carolina. I have officially been to the lower 48 U.S. states. Still have Alaska and Hawaii to hit, but we did it in exactly 48 weeks. We'll be heading back home to Georgia on Sunday. Today's Wednesday. So I'm recording a couple of episodes far in advance because I know that when I get home, it's going to be crazy with all the appointments I have, and friends to see, and family to see, and events to go to, and it's going to be the holidays coming up, so I am prepping and planning in advance. So today is December 7th. You are not going to be hearing this until the 26th, I think, is when this is set for, but before we can get into today's topic, which by the way is New Year, say me, why reinventing yourself never works. And before we can do that, let's do gratefuls and currently loving and all of those things. So like I said, we are in South Carolina. We're in Charleston and I have been to Charleston before. We all have. So it's nothing new, but my grandparents are coming up to see us tomorrow because it is my grandma's 60th birthday and we're celebrating her this weekend. And then we head home on Sunday, and I'm going to get to spend some time with my mom right when we get back, and then see lots of friends that I'm very excited to see. For gratitude, I am grateful for the weather here in Charleston. It was 80 degrees today in December, which is crazy, but it was really nice. I was able to walk outside without a hoodie or anything. And it was great, and I ate lunch outside and spent time outside, and that was really, really nice. I am currently loving Aerie. I have always really liked Aerie, and I have been wearing these sweatpants. I'm wearing them right now. They're um, they're called the corset joggers or sweatpants. I don't remember which one. And they're gray, and they have like a zipper detail in the front that's really unique, and I've never seen them before, but they're super duper comfortable. And they have, I want to call them sports bras, but apparently they're considered bralettes. But they're like this ribbed fabric, and they are so comfortable, and I'm obsessed with them. I am asking for every single, them in like a ton of different colors for Christmas. And I love them, I wear them every single day. So yeah. Today's episode is probably going to be shorter because I am testing out doing a bit of a looser outline, partly because I forgot to finish outlining it before I started recording, or before I was planning on starting recording, so I just filled in some things really quickly. So I would love to see what everyone thinks of having a looser outline But we'll see how it goes, because I usually have a very good, strong outline, and I'm a little bit nervous, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay. Let's get started. So, the new year is coming up. By the time you're hearing this, it is the day after Christmas, I think. Like I said, I'm not 100% sure, but it should be the day after Christmas, and you're getting ready for New Year's, which means there are tons of ads everywhere saying new year new me try this try that try this try that everyone is trying to reinvent themselves and improve themselves in january because it's the new year and apparently that's what we're supposed to do because i don't know why i'd love to know the history of that but because it's the new year everybody's trying to do tons of different things we're writing new year's resolutions that mm, most of them don't stick past valentine's day so There's lots of hopefulness, but also self-doubt in the air at this time of year. And I think it's really difficult for a lot of people because there's a lot of diet culture being spread. There's a lot of 
motivation. There's a lot of feeling guilty and bad for what you didn't do this past year. And I feel like we should all just take a minute and appreciate 2022 a little bit. I definitely had lots of ups and downs this year. I had a ton of fun on the trip and started the podcast and producing content. And I also switched to homeschool and all those transitions and all that pressure were still very difficult. And so as a result, like my mental health suffered a little bit throughout the year. And I think that people definitely like go through phases throughout the year. And I've seen so many, there's a trend going around where it's on, I know it's on Instagram. I'm not on TikTok, so I don't know if it's on there, but it's short form content of people showing their different eras of 2022. And I feel like that's very fitting because Like, we go through different phases throughout the year, just like kids do when they, one day they decide they want to be an astronaut, and the next day they're going to be a paleontologist. And so I feel like we all kind of do that throughout the year. And, like, looking back, I'm very proud of some of the things I've done this year. And I'm really appreciative of my progress because I'm very progress motivated. So I feel like everybody just needs to appreciate themselves a little bit more. And also realize that you don't have to wait for January 1st to get started. I personally have always had a habit of doing that because I'm such a perfectionist. I feel like I need to start on the first on Monday on the beginning of whatever it may be. This year I was going to try and break that, but there's been a lot going on these past this past month. And December is going to be really chaotic for me because we're getting home on Sunday. I have no idea what life is going to look like when I get back. I am not going to be doing school from the 11th. No, maybe it's not the 11th. It's the... The 9th is my last day of school. And from the 9th then on until January 2nd, I'm not doing school. So there's going to be a lot of time that I'm going to try and put into the podcasting content and then also friends and family and getting ready for the new year. But I don't want to start and try and start a new routine without having school in it because then I'm going to have a a wrong sense of how much time I have for other things. So let's talk a little bit about why reinventing ourselves almost never works and why our resolutions don't stick past Valentine's Day and how we can kind of break that cycle and make 2023 a really, really good year, a really strong year, and set ourselves up for success. I definitely think that a lot of people fail at their goals and resolutions because they don't stay consistent. They rely on motivation and not consistency to keep them going throughout the year. And motivation doesn't usually last long. Some people, it lasts longer than others, but sometimes it disappears and you have to find it again. So by relying on that motivation, you're not, you're not going to stay consistent because motivation goes up and down. And if motivation goes up and down and you're relying on your motivation to do things, then you're progress is going to go up and down. But consistency is the same across the board. So if we rely on our consistency, that's going to allow us to get much farther with those goals. And then we also don't, we don't set goals and resolutions that are realistic or attainable. And we have almost all experienced, like, when we set a goal and we fail at it, we couldn't reach it, whether it wasn't, it wasn't set correctly. We didn't form a goal that was attainable, reachable, and we also don't anticipate life happening and things getting set back, and then it just feels like everything is against us and we give up. So if we set those strong, attainable goals, it helps keep us on track, and if we set small goals along those bigger goals so that when we reach those things, we gain that motivation again, all right, we've hit this, now it's the next thing right? And we're excited to move forward because we knew we could do that one. Why can't we get to the next one and then the next one? And that definitely is really great if you're progress motivated like I am. When I am doing my to-do list for the day, I always start with something that's very fast and small that I know I can get done very quickly because then it's like, all right, I got one thing checked off. I can do the next thing. Like, I already did that thing. How could I not do this one too? And so that is definitely something that I try and focus on. I also think we all try and, and I know I do this all the time, 
flip our whole life and our lifestyle upside down and completely change it overnight. Like New Year's hits and we're like staying up till midnight and then we expect ourselves to get up that next weekday. I think this year the we have like a good recovery recovery day on Sunday before the week starts. And then we expect ourselves Monday morning to wake up and have this perfect lifestyle and new routine. And it's not just going to switch overnight. You have to build a lifestyle and you have to build those habits. And so then it maybe the first day it's a little bit difficult, but it's pretty easy because you're so excited and motivated for this new thing. And then after that, you're just stuck because you're expected to do all you're expecting yourself to do all these different things. But how are you supposed to expect yourself to do those when you've never done them before and you've never pushed yourself that much and kept it consistent? So if we start small and slowly work our way up, then that's going to help keep consistency and build a lifestyle rather than just trying to change overnight. There's lots of ways that you can start. I haven't figured out what works best. I feel like there's the option of you can start morning to night. So pick one habit for the first week in the morning and one at night and then like work your way and then the next week do another habit in the morning and another at night or you can just pick one a week and focus on that thing another good way to do it is pick 12 main habits that you know would change your lifestyle if you did those things every day it would make you super awesome super great version of yourself make you super productive, super effective, super in tune with your body, super healthy, pick 12 and set one for each month. Pick which ones are your main priorities, put those earlier. The whole month of January, you better do that, that first goal or first habit every single day. Just do that one thing. It's just one thing. Do it every single day. Come February, Pick a second one. You're going to keep doing the one you did in January and then do the next thing every single day and so on. That's another great way that you can do it. But you also have to figure out what works for you and pay attention to what motivates you, what excites you. But don't expect yourself to switch your lifestyle overnight and then keep that lifestyle. You really have to build it up. You can also try a challenge. My parents have done 75 hard. I've never been a big fan of challenges like this, but I know for some people it really helps keep them motivated and consistent. There's tons of different ones out there. There's 75 hard, 75 soft, 45 shift, so many different ones. So pick one or start your own that works specifically for you. But try and challenge yourself a little bit. Don't try and push yourself too hard in the beginning because then you're going to get burnt out and unmotivated. You also need to find someone or something to keep you accountable, to keep you consistent, to something that's forcing you. It's almost like you don't have a choice. That's kind of the thing that I see with the podcast is I have people that have messaged me and be and have told me how good they feel after listening to an episode or how important my podcast is to them and how it has helped them. And so it feels like, like, I need to, like, they need that. I can't just let them down. And of course, it's important to take breaks. I shouldn't do the podcast because of someone else. I love doing it, and that's why I do it. But also, that it helps keep me accountable. The people who listen help keep me accountable and keep me up to date and ask, what's the next episode going to be? Where is it at? Like, I'm excited to listen. If you're doing a challenge, you could post it on social media. That way you have tons of people watching you. If that's what helps keep you accountable is knowing that there's people watching. Or find a family member or a friend that can help keep you accountable. Make sure that they also have something that you need to keep them accountable for so it goes both ways. My best friend Raina and I, we do it with gratitude. So we text each other what we're grateful for almost every day. We haven't been great about it the past few weeks, but... We try and ask each other, where's your grateful at? Like, what are you grateful for? Come on now, where's it at? So find someone or something to keep you accountable. There's also other ways, whether it's apps on your phone or, like I said, social media is a really good one for some people. If you're tracking your progress, 
that can help because you're marking things down and journaling about your progress is also a really great way. Now, in order to make these transitions and these new habits and these new goals easier to achieve, you need to set yourself up for success. Do things that make it easier for you to do the habits and the goals and the lifestyle changes that you want to do. So many people say and use this as an example by setting out your workout clothes in the morning or at night so that in the morning they're already ready for you. Tons and tons of people do that. But there's also lots of other ways. Clean your space before the new year. Don't wait for spring cleaning. Make sure it's clean and organized and ready. You know where your things are. Meal prep, if you're focusing more on food and your relationship with food, meal prep. If you need to renew your gym membership, just make sure that you have the things set that you need to have set. If you are focusing on reading, get that book and put it by your bed. If you're focused on journaling, get your notebook and your pen and set it out where you can see it. If you're focused on water, make sure you have a glass of water next to your bed and ready for you. If you want to take your vitamins, make sure they're set out where you can see them and you know you'll take them. Make sure you do the things that are going to allow you to more easily do them. Do the habits that you want to do. It's also important to remember not to be strict, but be disciplined. I am told that I'm a very disciplined person, but I feel like I'm not. Like, internally, I feel like I'm not disciplined enough. I think it comes down to keeping promises with yourself. When you make promises with yourself, and then you don't fulfill those promises, it's going to ruin your self-image and make you feel like you're not disciplined because you couldn't even get yourself to fulfill that small promise to yourself. And it's also hard to find a balance between disciplined and strict. But just because you're building this new life doesn't mean you don't deserve breaks. You don't deserve certain foods and certain things. Because if in your new lifestyle you're limiting yourself that way, are you going to be happy in this new lifestyle that you're trying to build? If you say, I hate using food as an example because some people have like a really bad relationship with it. I'm trying to think of another one, but I can't. So I'm going to use food as an example. If you say... I want to eat these things, and I don't want to eat sugar. No sugar is allowed. Zero. Like, don't push away the things that make you happy. Be disciplined, but don't restrict yourself and take those things away. Life is so fast-paced, and for some people and a lot of people, it's hard to find those small things in daily life that bring them joy and make them excited. So when you find something like that, don't push it away. If you're just absolutely in love with, I don't know, mini cupcakes. You should not eat a whole box of mini cupcakes in a day or a whole 12 boxes of cupcakes. But don't don't say, I can never have these again. Don't take them away from yourself. Understand that there has to be moderation. You don't have to earn them. Eat them when you feel like them, but also recognize why you're craving that thing and make sure that it is truly that you want the cupcake or whatever it is that you want and are trying to take away from yourself, make sure that it's really that you want that, not something else. Because there's tons of other things that may cause those kinds of cravings. So pay attention to that. If you change something small every single day, it'll be much easier than trying to flip your whole life upside down. If you're awful at drinking water like I am, start the first week in the new year and say, I just want to drink at least one glass or one of my bottles just one then if you need another week to just drink to at least just drink one take that week or you can move up and say I'm gonna drink two this week just slowly in small steps start building your new lifestyle instead of trying to change your whole life and your whole personality and your whole being and your whole self overnight just because the date changed and you also don't have to change everything about yourself it's always great to work on yourself and improve yourself but don't think that you need to change yourself for other people this episode was a little bit crazy and not super thought through like I said we're trying to loose outline so I'd love to know I'm going to leave a question on this episode 
So if you're on Spotify, you can answer the question below somewhere. And let me know your thoughts on a looser outline and how you felt about it, because I don't love it. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to give this podcast a rate and review, as well as follow me on all my socials linked in the show notes. Don't forget to drink some water, and I'll talk to you later.